Ladies and gentlemen, are there plans by William Ruto's government to arrest Raila Amolo Odinga and other Azimio leaders anytime from now? That's the question which I'm asking myself because there is a statement, press statement, which has been released by Professor Kithure Kedeke. And in that press statement, it is clear that plans to arrest Raila and Azimio leaders are actually complete. I want us to go through that press statement verbatim. But before we do that, I've noted a few things in that letter. The first thing I've noted in the letter is that the tone of that letter is actually not characteristic of uh, Professor Kithure Kindiki's tone. The tone is mirroring the, the speeches which Denis Itumbi, Eric Ngeno, and the previous employees of the Presidential Strategic Communications Unit used to, to write. I doubt if Professor Kithure Kindiki wrote that statement. So that's the first thing I noted. The second thing I've noted from that press release, which we are going to watch, I mean, to go through very briefly here. The second thing I've noted is that that particular statement was not released on the official pages of Professor Keture Kendiki. You know, if Professor Keture Kendiki wanted to release a statement, after writing, the best, the best would have been to release it to the media. If not, share it. And the first place would have been his official Facebook page or Twitter. It has not been shared on that. The second would have been probably the Ministry of Interior. Official pages sharing the statement because he's the minister. And again, if th those were not possible, then at least it would have been shared by the head of communications in the ministry, who, is, who also speaks for Professor Kithure Kindiki, who in this case is none other than Francis Gashuri. But this statement was shared by other, none other than Gerald Bitok. Who is Gerald Bitok? I think he is uh, an employee at State House. But I don't want to get into that. That's something, just I, that's something which I just observed. Now, let us start by going through this letter, Vabatin. Huh? First of all, this letter appears to be petty. It's not addressing the concerns and the issue. And reading through the letter you realize that whoever wrote it is trying to exonerate the Ministry of Interior for the deaths and possibly the maiming of Kenyans. So far in Russia alone, 11 people are admitted there, nursing wounds from uh, the police. But let me just go through this letter. It's, it's in points. Point number one, it states, today some parts of Nairobi and a few other towns across the country witnessed widespread violence, looting, and destruction of private and public property. Now, if you read that statement clearly, it's like they are assuming that just a small section of Nairobi, small parts of Nairobi, and a section of the Republic. The truth of the matter is that the entire country today came to a standstill. There were demonstrations all over. Not only in Nairobi and a few parts. The entire country was at a standstill. They are not acknowledging that here. Of course, it's part of communication strategy. And number two, they are saying, the authors of today's ogi of violence and destructions took cue from a small group of former and current politicians coalescing around Mr. Raila Odinga, whose association with violence, with violent politics in Kenya is now legendary. Now, this is where these guys go wrong. You see, if Kenya Kwanza was serious, then they should take a minute, study the mood of the country, figure out the best way to deal with the anger. Kenyans are currently angry, and they're also hungry with this government. And the truth of the matter is that even going by the results of the last election, Relu Dinga's support base is almost tough. If you go by IBC, William Ruto won with only 200,000. As things stand today, William Ruto has lost substantial number of his supporters due to unfulfilled promises. So which means if elections were to be held today, William Ruto might not get the number of votes he got in the last election. So to assume that um, it's just uh, a small group is also being dismissive. And that's why I tend to think that William Ruto must rethink his strategy. 
Now number 3 it says from 1982 attempted coup d'etat to the 2007 2008 post election violence this same politician and his collaborate, collaborators then and now are associated with risky politics that has occasionally plunged the can our country into near destruction now what these guys are forgetting that out of the 2020 2007 election violence icc submitted names of four individuals one of those individuals was none other than william samera pruto and ruto's name as we speak is still at icc his case was never terminated that's the fact red odinga's name was never submitted to icc william ruto's name was submitted so when you talk of the 2007 post election violence then you can go back into the history of the republic of kenya and figure out where were the the violence more pronounced it was in rift valley and it was also in places like naivasha which were again trying to retaliate well documented so the whoever wrote this letter i think ought to have missed if i were ruto or whoever i would have omitted that part because professor kituri kindiki was actually william ruto's lawyer i think urukanyata's lawyer in that particular case huh? and it says after the 2017 general election the same politicians and his believers in complete disregard of pronouncement of kenyan's constitutionally established institution intimidated the country through violence into his accommodation in government resulting to a period of government excesses and accumulation of huge national debt and you surge in cost of living cost of living consequences which kenyans still struggle to recover from you see william ruto and his government told kenyans that fools are no longer in the republic of kenya william ruto took office in the year 2022 in august he made promises himself and the truth of the matter is that if you look at the history the date history of this country the dates were actually accumulated between 2013 and 2017 during that time william ruto was the deputy president of the republic of kenya forget about this propaganda so basically they are trying to to blame the cost of living and any other matter on the handshake which is not the case and is saying the letter proceeds number 5 in a most characteristic manner the architect of today's lawlessness and impunity together with his co-conspirators have once again overseen a day of shameless and unprovoked looting of public premises illegal destruction of economic activities and extensive damage of major public assets and infrastructure built on the sweat of taxpayers money which begs the question who sponsored this that's the question was someone sponsoring some of these destructions to find an excuse if you look at uh, i was keenly following the events at uh, expressway a place which is normally well secured there were no police so the police arrived there at what time very late when the destructions had already happened and therefore it is important for kenyans to demand for the cctv footages to identify the individuals who participated in the destruction of the expressway very important and it goes on to say number 6 they lied to the police that they would be holding a peaceful political rally at Kamkuji grounds only for them to unleash terror on innocent Kenyans as a result of which lives have been lost scores of law enforcement officers and civilians have been grievously injured and an immeasurable loss to the country's economy have been occasioned now again look at these people you see reludinga had announced that he was going to go to Kamkuji in the morning they tried to erect the tent was pulled down by none other than the police it is the same same police 
who went and dispersed people who were in Kamkunji. Which means whatever Raila Odinga said could be true. That there were attempts to try and frustrate or even eliminate their supporters if they had made their, their intention, if they actually fulfilled their intention and went to Kamkunji. It means the Kenya Kwanza government were actually disappointed that their plans to corner as new supporters in Kamkunji did not fail. The truth of the matter is that this mandamano happened throughout the country. Nakuru, Naivasha, Kisi, Nyamera, Bosia, Kakamega, Emali, Mlolongo, Kilifi, West Pokot, Turkana, almost Nyeri, almost all parts of the Republic of Kenya. There were Matatu demonstrators and there were Azimio rallies. Azimio rally was supposed to take place in Kamukunji, never took place. So you can conclude that the, the, the demonstrations which were witnessed were actually by the Matatu operators. <laughs> I don't know. But listen to number seven. This culture of impunity will stop. All those who took part directly or indirectly in today's well-orchestrated violation of public safety and security of our nation shall be punished. Okay? Let's wait and see how that's going to happen. And they are concluding that the government has tonight, and that is my point, that the government has tonight mobilized all law enforcement agencies of the state and the institutions of our country's criminal justice system to conclude investigations urgently and proceed to arrest and prosecute all those involved in planning and execution of the crimes committed today, including those who funded and otherwise aided or abetted the offenders. In our constitution, picketing is a right. So let us wait and see the, the law they are going to use. But I have a simple advice for William Ruto. Mr. Zakayo, the president of the Republic of Kenya, it is time for you to come down. If you don't come down, this country, you will not have a country to lead. You will not have a country to lead. It's unfortunate that it took Uru Kenyatta almost seven years for him to be unpopular. It's only taking you less than a year to be unpopular. So you must come down. Have your senses back. Take charge of the country. This statement by the likes of Itumbi, Eric Ngeno, and Bitok will not move this country forward. I won't have a problem if this statement by the Ministry of Interior was written by an expert who would have addressed the issue of the demonstrations, the issue of the laws which have been broken, the issues of the measures the government is taking to prevent future, and the personal responsibilities of individuals responsible for any destructions and life to property. I don't know what you think, but let us wait and see if these guys will arrest Raila Amolo Odinga. Thank you, and may you have a good day.